Hello and welcome to another A La Prima demo uh, by me, Hans Guerin, art mentor. This is a portrait of a lion, you know, just representing the faculty at the Schuler School of Fine Arts uh, Wildlife Exhibition and Contest called Fur to Feathers. I'm not in the contest, but uh, as faculty and staff, it's just nice to kind of have some artwork from the, from the staff there. Uh, but we try to keep the uh, contest and exhibition as, as impartial and, um, and fair as possible. So if you are interested in the show, it's going to start on April 6, 2024. Uh, you can go to schulerschool.com for details. It'll be up until April 31st for the digital part. The in-person show will be over on the 13th. So I hope you stop by and, and see some amazing art from a, a very diverse group of people and subject matter within that animal category. So uh, here we are on the lion, and you can see how simple the line work started from very rough geometric shapes to a breakdown of smaller shapes. It is all about shapes. I'm going to say shapes too many times. I don't think it's even possible to say it too many times, because right now we're not drawing lion per se. I'm drawing that squint level, I'm, I'm really studying what I actually see rather than what I expect to see. So eyes are a dangerous thing to say early on because then you start painting what you think an eye looks like. Noses, mouths, mane, whatever you think that stuff looks like. Sometimes it interferes with what you're actually seeing. So this is just all about relationships. You can see a really deep middle tone against a really deep shadow, then a shape of light. So now it's just kind of three categories of uh, values. Uh, the background is a part of that dark value. And this just very simple pattern work gives me three ways of measuring. I can line the edges of uh, masses up with vertical plumb lines and horizontal plumb lines. I can take proportions saying that any two points ought to relate to any other two points compared to the reference, in this case a photo, but I do paint from life a lot, but not lions <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, but then the third is that a jigsaw puzzle of big blocky shapes. So if those shapes fit together, then the next set of shapes ought to fit within those shapes. And then the next set of shapes within those shapes. When they don't fit, then you can problem solve. And it's worth celebrating that found this kind of uh, proportional relationship problem early in the process. And it's not like you have to move detail shapes or wrangle the entire painting around detail, but more of constructing guessing, guessing and modifying, you know, so uh, you really can't make a mistake when you treat it this way and you're staying very simple and you're problem solving big massive shapes. So here I'm breaking it down further and now I've got more of a story of the light. So the story of the light is three aspects. It's a color, direction, and intensity of the light. So the light source in this case is, you know, probably medium. It's not like the shadows are harsh and, and super dark. But it's also not like the uh, the light is kind of washing out everything. So that would be a powerful light source. A very weak light source, that, you know, the light would just melt into shadow, very soft edges, a little on the um, subtle side, you know, not, not the bold side. So this is kind of like right in between. The color is uh, fairly warm. You can see that turning shadow in the cheek getting fairly cool before it gets a nice warm reflected light. If you look at artists like Joaquin Soroya, you can see like every time he shifts in value, he's also shifting in temperature. I try to embrace that a little bit in telling the story of the light. From this blocky stage, I made sure that the eyes are getting developed now, you know, these secondary shapes. Now I've got a lot of information to fit these in, and I want to be very specific with them because earlier on it would have been a wild guess, but now I've got a lot of context to get the shape that I want, the intensity that I want, and be able to compare it to the entire painting rather than this tiny little moment. Now I have where I want my darkest dark to be. It's going to be in that eyelid pupil area of the eye. I don't want anything else to compete with it. You know, you'll, you'll notice too that I'm jumping around a lot, and the, the jumping around is important to me because you can get eye fatigue. If you're working on one area for too long, you can just get maybe a little locked in and kind of miss the hole. But also, too, is like everything kind of just kind of gets melted into this, this kind of glob of observation instead of just taking a break and getting back to it and getting a, almost a first impression again, that sort of fresh observation. And so I, I'm bouncing around a lot. And then, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be honing in later uh, into details, but you can see it going from bigger shapes to smaller shapes. 
If you like how this painting is going and you want to know more about my artwork, I love to hear comments and love it when people share. So please subscribe at my channel, Hans Guerin, Art Mentor. Now, the, now is the stage where I'm starting to get directional brushstrokes. And so before they were more kind of mass shapes, but now, now I'm going to move the brush in the direction of the hairs. I'm going to make sure that the shadows kind of roll in the anatomy shapes as it goes from light to the shadow. So uh, with those two considerations, I can um, start breaking down these simple shapes into something that really tells the anatomy of a lion. And, you know, I'm not an expert on lions. Uh, there are some subject matter that I feel I can be an expert on and I can know what I can get away with and what I can't. But uh, other than knowing human anatomy and a, a sense of anatomy, specifically applying it to a lion isn't something I'd be comfortable, um, you know, making it up with, with accuracy. You know, you can, you can get away with a lot when you keep things simple, but in this case I wanted to get kind of all that, those facial muscles in there. I wanted to make sure the hair wraps around the, the head the right way. So it's the, the smaller shapes within the shapes, but again, directional brush strokes tell me a little bit more of that story of anatomy. So now I'm building environment. So I know what the face looks like and now I know that as I build the ear and the mane that I won't be competing with the face too much. And if I do, I know right away that I need to tone it down or enhance the subject matter. And I'm going to do both. So as these shapes start getting kind of honed down smaller and smaller, I wanted to take another brief moment to just remind everyone to subscribe and share. And I love to hear your comments so that I can reply to them and talk shop, which I love to do. Right, so I'm going to be putting in these shapes and I'm going to be realizing, okay, look, you know, some of these darks are competing with the eye. So right there in the ear, I took a little bit of that intensity of the dark away. But I use that as an opportunity not only to solve a problem, but to also enhance the painting with some kind of funky colors, you know, that rich... Uh, purple, violet, and a little bit of green. Um, and so a lot of times these aren't corrections per se. It's not a mistake that I have to fix. It's more of a, a moving forward in a creative direction while also improving the drawing and anatomy. Hopefully the style too. And so uh, just like before, I'm going to jump around a lot. So here I'm back in the face and then I'll go back into the mane, back into the ear that fresh look, that little pause was enough to, to kind of break that laser focus. The general plan here is to go from a little bit more rendered near the uh, eyes and nose to rather abstract as it gets further out. It's just going to be a lot of applying, reflecting, applying, reflecting. So that little pause to, to just kind of see how things are going. Not just hack away mindlessly, but to actually take in how the entire painting works all together, as well as these small little moments. You're bound at some point in the painting to start looking at only at a very small moment, and it's really easy to get that out of whack to the rest of the painting. So jumping around in main shapes, having a little bit of fun with colors, blues and greens, purples. And just making sure that the detail, the colors, the intensity of the darks, uh, they're not going to compete with that eye. So I flipped it over so that I can do that uh, main into the background. I, I scumbled the background on super thin. Like I just kind of scrubbed it on there in multiple directions so it didn't imply a direction. But it leaves that airiness of the brush stroke. So now I just take a big glob of paint with a ton of oil in it and just move it from thick to thin as I pull the brush away and leave little hairs over the background. And now between the hairs is that darkness of the background. I don't have to paint around them. And I'm very much considering the direction of the brush stroke because that does reflect the anatomy underneath. Uh, so the, the volumes of the hair wrap around the form and uh, they do change direction. So if I can observe the direction and the length of the hair, I, I can do my own thing. I can just make sure that it follows kind of a loose guidance and then make sure the painting suits me artistically. And so uh, I'm moving down and you can see just how direct and simple I've kept the, the background of the main. 
I really wanted to feel like that's kind of losing some intensity as it goes back in space. So now I'm getting some fine textures. At this point, I, I remember I, I said to the audience watching me that I'm still going to do more to enhance that eye area. And the answer to me is impasto. And so I'm toning down the darks in the nose. That's going to help with the eye. I'm getting some blues and greens and purples in there as well. And that's fun, but it keeps it as a dark, but not an intense dark. I want that intense dark to be in the eye. After a little refinement, I'll be ready to really chunk on the paint. And that will give that kind of power and almost sculpture relief quality to the area where I want to draw the eye to the most. You see me engaging with my audience. <laughs> it's fun paint with uh, you know people watching and, and participating. You know, sometimes we're talking about the painting itself, but a lot of times we're just chit-chatting too, and that's fun. Keeps it, uh, you know, interesting. So here are the uh, little pockets of dark that the whiskers fit into. Uh, I want to make sure they're soft-edged. I want to make sure that it's a fun detail note, but it doesn't dominate the painting as sometimes detail does. So I put it in, in uh, you know, maybe a little lighter than I see it, and then I fuzz the edges just a little bit, and that helps too. And they're going to, that's going to be the foundation for the whiskers that go on top. Just like before, bouncing around a little bit. And now I'm really slopping on the paint. Just really thick paint. Globs, globs, globs. And uh, it, it just gives it a lot of character, in my opinion, especially a la prima, where there's that kind of sort of immediate, immediacy of the brush stroke. Like you can really feel the textures and um, the time component that artists have to put in to get it all finished in one sitting. Uh, to me, it adds a ton of character to paintings. And so I, I have my tight rendered paintings and I have my uh, a la primas to balance them out. I like to have both kind of styles going on. You know, there's in between too. We'll, we'll have some paintings where I'll, I'll go a little funkier with color. Uh, some might do even more texture than this where, you know, we'll maybe take a palette knife and trowel it on. But this was plenty thick. This were, these were almost single brush strokes of so just really loading up the brush globbing it down in the direction and value and color that is less of a guess now that I have so much contextual information. So that gave the uh, eye structure a little bit more focus. It took it away from the main where I didn't want the eye to go. And we're at the point of diminishing return. So that happens in a painting when you can have a finished product already. It can be done. It's just a matter of adding that next thing and that next thing and that next thing. So each one that we add is going to be less impactful than the one before. And she's going to keep getting less impactful as we keep going down to that next little nitpick. And so you can definitely be done. And for some artists, it's worth it to have every little detail. For some other artists, it's good to just leave it big and choppy. And there's everything in between. And um, that's going to be very personal. This painting in particular, I didn't I didn't really want it to be a tightly rendered lion. I only gave myself about three and a half, uh, three and three quarters of an hour. I wanted the detail to support the whiskers, which meant that I've already established kind of a key of texture as well, uh, detail as well. And so um, it would make no sense to have really fine whisker hairs, but have no detail anywhere else. Right? Maybe that could be the focal point, but I mean, honestly, it's not for one and for two. It might stand out a little bit as being um, out of character with the rest of the painting. And so uh, this is where the, the whiskers go in. We're, we're doing final touches. Uh, these are going to be as much as humanly possible single strokes because I want a single hair, but that's tricky because I want them to be thicker than the previous layer of paint. So when you're trying to add paint to a wet painting, the trick is to uh, for brush control. So if the brush stroke is thicker than the previous layer, it just lays that paint right on top. But the, the part you want to be careful for is you keep taking swipes with that brush, there's less paint on the hairs of the brush, and now it's deposited onto the painting. So now you're painting with weak paint, it's just going to smash together. You're going to make this we uh, weird, globby, muddy mess. And so I'm taking 
as, as much as possible, sort of a load up of the brush, try as much as possible to get a single brush stroke to make those uh, whiskers to sit on top of that dark mass underneath. Uh, there's a little problem solve. I think the hair got a little thick and I started to uh, erase a little bit using the shadow colors. And that often happens when that, those little detail brushes, they ha hardly hold any paint at all. So when they start getting thin in paint, then the tendency is to press. I know better, but you know, you can be really disciplined and still make little mistakes. So um, I actually don't shy away from telling people when I make an error. And I think that was a little error that I did a little problem solve on. It wasn't a big deal. But um, I do like to point out when something went wrong that I've got to problem solve my way through because that's really where creation happens. You know, if, if every painting went perfectly from start to finish, then you kind of call it easy. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me. I really enjoyed uh, doing this painting and I really hope to see you for the next one. Look into the description links under the video and find out more about my art mentorship program and subscribe to my channel and visit my website at hansgaron.com.